Hi, I'm Nick Bearcroft. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a portrait of a beautiful cat, a young cheetah called Willow from the Big Cat Sanctuary in Kent, uh, in pastels all along with just a few simple colours as usual. Okay, to begin with, uh, we've got the outline sketched out on the velour paper uh, using a half lap pastel in this case. You can use a charcoal pencil or something like that, or even a white hard pastel if you're unsure, because the white pastel will cover and erase easier than the hard lap pastel. Um, okay, so we've got um, the markings in place roughly. I've uh, got the features in place, which is the most important thing, I guess, and a kind of staggered outline. Now, I, I want to put a, a nice highlight around the outline later on, so I don't want to do a hard line or make it too dark at this point. So, once we've got our outline established on the floor, then what we need to do is uh, reinforce that sketch a little bit, add a little bit more detail, and all important tones. So let's begin with uh, the ears and work down. Uh, again, I don't want to do too much more on the outline because that's going to be quite pale. So let's just gently shade in the centre of the ear. And remember, when you're using pastel on the law, it's always best to work lighter than you might think or you might need because it's easier to add another layer and it is to try and take it off. It's very difficult to get off once you've got the pastel on there. So light layers, pieces softer as well. And what I'm doing is gently shading in the centre of the ear, adding a little bit of uh, fur texture again around the base of the ear as we go. And you'll find that we'll work on this ear as well. You'll find that uh, when you come to drawing or painting animals with markings, spots, stripes and whatever, the markings are going to be the most important thing. Once you've established those and the features, you know, you've virtually got your animal sorted out. Again, a little bit more fur texture and shading around the base of the ear. What I'll do is I'll work from the outside in. Uh, the outer edges, I want to keep nice and soft, almost blurred and that will help to show the softness of uh, our leopard cub. Now Willow is about three years old now I think and this was uh, taken a couple of years ago so she was still quite young and quite fluffy in terms of the fur so we want to capture that fluffiness and the law is great for adding softness or creating softness and fluffy fur and so on. Um, and the way we do that is use the a flatter part of the pastel, not the point, where we want it to be softest. So around the edge, you don't want to see too much detail. The less detail you have, the softer it looks. And don't forget, <coughs> working on the law, keep rubbing the pastel in. That pushes the pastel into the fibres of the paper, makes it stick. Also, it lightens the tone a little bit. So, if you're a bit too heavy handed, just a good rub will lighten the tone. Also, it softens the mark, it softens the edges, and so on. So, as we get closer to the features, then we'll add kind of a slightly sharper texture bit by bit. I always say that uh, don't worry about fine details too early. We can put all the fine details on right at the end if you want to. Build up with some nice soft underlayers first. And remember, at this stage, start thinking about the length, direction, thickness of the fur, and so on. So, here we're really making these uh, soft marks for the dark markings, the spots, and so on. Think about the length and direction. Think about it earlier on, and then you won't have to worry too much later. So you see the fur on the forehead is short, but going upwards. Notice that um, at this stage, when you start to rub your marks, you'll get a little bit of 
ready to turn in and around those marks, in and around those spots, which is useful. So it starts to add terminal values as well at this early stage. So don't be afraid of giving it a really good run now and again. make the marking slightly darker, slightly heavier as we come to the facial area. So you can see what will happen is that the stronger tones, the more detail we have in this area, and the less strong tones, less detail in the back, it gives you a sense of almost three-dimensional. So again, working around the edge of the cheek, Fairly soft around the edge, a little bit darker. We're starting to bring the face forward now. It's always worth remembering that the first stage, this stage, your tonal sketch, is like an underpainting. It uh, gives you your shapes, your forms, even your lighting, your atmosphere, everything. So it's worth spending a little bit of extra time at this point, but don't go overboard with the details. So we get a little bit darker around these very distinctive teardrop markings that Jesus have, running from the corner of the eye down the side of the face. So again, you'll find it useful when working on cats with markings go from one side and then the other. It helps you to keep things in balance. So we have the mouth just showing her little teeth. And the lower lip. So yeah, don't worry about um, smudging the outline of your teeth. Then no, no, go on later. That's those marks are really just uh, for location. And the nose, two parts of the nose really, once we've got the shape there's no need to worry about drawing around the nostrils. Sometimes when you draw around the nostrils and they're too visible, too obvious, it can look a little bit odd. So you can just break it down into a, a, a shaded area and a highlight on the top. As long as you get the, the shape correct around the tip, top of the nostrils down to the cleft between the lips. So that's all that's really necessary. So switch to the slightly rounded corner of the black pastel now, just to have a little bit more detail in the texture around the cheeks. Of course this is, uh, as I said, just going to help pull the face forward. Here, yeah, almost three dimensional look. Don't forget to keep leaning back from your easel. Squint at your painting. Squinting is the best way to check tones. Once you, you are sat on, on top of it, almost, for any length of time, what appears to be quite dark, close up, when you lean back and squint, can be quite faint. So always Give it a squint test now and again. Screw your eyes up and squint at it. It's the best way to check turns. Also, your brain doesn't get bogged down with trying to absorb too much detail. Which is not what it's all about at this stage. Tonal values are the most important thing at this stage. A little soft edge around the chin, just to show the shape. aren't very visible, certainly on the reference photograph, but they are there. And remember, there are always four rows, and they follow the curve of the cheeks, of course. Okay, so then we'll work on the eyes. Now I've got the eye shape established. What I want to do is just round them off a little bit here and there, get rid of the straight line over the top. 
make sure I've got the pupils in the right place. And you can, of course, change that later on. You can paint over the eyes and reposition the pupils if you need to. And don't forget, all cats, all predatory animals, will have slightly, slightly crossed eyes, slightly, dare I say, buzz eyes. Which helps to focus on a, a, a point in the distance for hunting. Okay, so we sketched in, uh, modified the initial sketch a little bit more, added a little bit more detail here and there, a little bit more texture. The next important thing is to get some tonal values in. Now I'm going to start with the eyes where we left off just now. It's important to remember that the eyes are set well back. So if you don't add some tone in the eyes, what they'll do is that they'll stand out too much, they'll be too bright. So take the flat of your black pastel, the hard pastel, I've got a nice flat end, I don't know, well, I'll use that, and shade the eyes in. Nice light tone to begin with. Always remember when you're adding tone, work from light to dark. If they're not dark enough, you can add more. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add another layer. And already you can see those eyes are now beginning to set well back. Okay, so <coughs> now we're going to add some tonal values to the rest of the cheetah. Um, we we'll start between the eyes because we've got a, a, a forehead here running down from the top of the head down to between the eyes and then we've got the bridge of the nose that comes out. So we can show that shape again, look for simple tones. So use a flat of the pastel and just below the eye or just to the inside of the eyes I should say, both sides, we have that kind of rounded form almost. And a little indentation in the fur in the forehead. And that starts to give us that more important protruding forehead, not so much on the cheek, so where it goes inwards and then out again on the bridge of the nose. So that's the importance of getting your tonal values correct at this stage. We begin to show the form, whereas lines show the shape, tones show the form, the underlying anatomical form, if you like. So you have to add layer by layer until you've got as dark as you want. And then we'll go around the cheeks here, but they're not flat, they're rounded. So we're going to have to show they're rounded. And remember, if the light's coming from above, they're, they're going to be lighter on the top. Imagine that's a, a sphere, each side, or an egg shape each side. It's going to get lighter on the top and slightly darker underneath. Start to shade the middle section down to the bottom. Give it a good rub, which as you can see softens the edges. And then maybe a little bit more around the lower part, just below the nose, down to the mouth. Don't worry about going over your lines either. You don't have to keep it uh, all nice and neat at this stage. You can go over that later on. So before we get to the outer edges, the forehead from just above the eyes to the top of the head again is a little bit darker not as dark as the shadow underneath but just a, a touch darker so always when you're toning fur stroke your pastel lightly in the direction of the fur if that means if you catch an edge of the pastel at least it's going in the right direction that's the centre of the forehead we'll just bring it out around the eyebrows and again the eyebrows here and here are going to be lighter. So the lighter fur and also they come out towards you, so make them lighter and they'll appear to come towards you. So we'll leave those as their paper, as we'll do with the, the top of the head as well, because we want to get a nice highlight on that. And the inside of the ears, both sides. nice and soft and then we'll do the, the cheeks so underneath the eyes <coughs> we always have a, a lighter patch of fur and then it goes to the colour so this is typical for leopards, cheetahs, tigers, even lions 
light patch of uh, just below the eye and shadows around those cheeks. <coughs> and same here, lighter patch just below the eye. Try and follow the direction of the fur if you can. Nice and light. Don't be afraid to give it a good firm rub with your finger or with kitchen paper if you like. If you don't like uh, getting your fingers dirty you can use scrunch up kitchen roll. And we'll darken it below the jaw, below the chin. Help push that away. And then we're almost ready to do the outer part. Again, which is going to be fairly light. Not too heavy. And that's going to help push it back. Darker tones recede, lighter tones come forward. By pushing the outer edge back a little bit, you see we're starting to get that sense of three dimensional form just by using total value. We're going to darken the eyes just a little bit more. And we can darken them later once we've added colour as well, so <coughs> it's not your final opportunity. Just darken that sort of shadow below the a little bit more. And that's the advantage of being able to sit back and squint at it. Tell as you almost straight away whether something is too dark. I think that should do. It gives a nice sort of cheetah, almost like a scowl, like a frown. So, <coughs> that's the total sketch completed. What I want to do uh, at this point, before we start adding colour, is add a little bit of tone in the background. Now, the original photograph, of course, is taken in the Willows enclosure with uh, green grass and Kent in the enclosure. What I want to do is get a more natural looking setting in the background. So we're going to have some greens and browns in there. But what what I think uh, would be nice if we imagine the cheetahs in, a, in some long grass, crouched down, ready to stalk some prey. Then we can probably have a few little vertical strokes of tone in the background. Keep it nice and soft, so we want, don't want it to intrude. It's almost like a blurred background tone. And the idea about of this is not only just to add tone in the background, but to help to bring your subject forward by maybe darkening the corners a little bit. So you see the corners a little bit darker than the middle a bit darker than the, the lower section here and that's going to help to push your subject forward as well. You could of course just do a, a, a blurred background but I think we'll have a sort of textured background for this one. If you look on my other tutorials you see that uh, quite often we do a kind of textured blurred background. This is a similar effect but uh, using vertical strokes instead of just making it mottled if you like. So on top of that <coughs> what we'll do is start out some colour. So once you finish your terminal sketch uh, you can make it as detailed as you want of course. The uh, you know, more detailed you make it at this stage then the easier it becomes later on I guess. Uh, but we're going to move on to uh, adding your base colour now for the background and the cheetah. So we'll start with the background. First of all what I'm going to do is have uh, an overall subtle green in the background and then warm it up with some browns. Uh, at this stage, uh, it's a good idea to just go into the edge of your subject a little bit with the colour. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. You can easily paint over that. What you can't paint over so easily is a heavy black, for example. So I'm just going to put a few little strokes of very light green in the background, not too heavy. Again, following the rules that you should put it on light and then add more if you need to. But I think uh, for this one, what I want to do is let some of the warmth of the sanded colour paper show through, to warm the green up a little bit. <coughs> but also, to make it too heavy, too strong a green, it'll look artificial, um, won't look so natural. So I'm going to take the warm brown lace and add some streaks of that as well. So this hopefully is going to give me more of a feeling of uh, a natural setting with dried grasses that you might have in the 
um, African plains, with touches of green here and there, but still fairly, fairly soft. And one of the advantages of using this really sort of golden brown, warm brown in the background, is we're using that in the tutor as well. And that's going to give us a sense of harmony between background and subject. And remember, of course, that uh, animals in the wild, especially uh, predatory animals, camouflage themselves to a certain extent by matching the colours of their coats to the colours of their environment. So we want to get that, that warm brown into the background as well as in the cheetah. So for the cheetah, we're going to have two colours, two base colours really. Um, remember that we're using a warm, sandy brown paper. It's going to be a warm painting overall, uh, but if we use all warm colours, it's going to look a little bit too flat. So what we're going to do is uh, introduce uh, a cool colour to balance out, a cool complementary colour to balance out this warm brown. So we'll do that first. What I'm doing is using a purple, a dioxazine purple, and that's going to help to cool certain areas down in the cheetah. For example, the cool nose, the mouth. Um, tear ducts and maybe even the inner part of the ear. But the great thing about that is it's a complementary colour, it's opposite the colour wheel to the warm brown and the two sit together very, very well. So let's start with the inner ear. Um, especially when you're using soft pastels, remember to do it light. If you do it light, it's visible at the moment, but it may, may not be too visible later on. But there will be hints showing through. And when you get the hints of the purple showing through, balancing with those warm browns, it really does make a big difference. So I just do a little hint around the lower rims. We're going to paint over this later, of course. This is background colour, foundation colour if you like. Around the lower rims and into the tear duct area. And then we'll do the whole of the tip of the nose. Obviously highlighted bit and the shaded bit. Don't forget to go around, around the outside of the nose a little bit so you don't uh, add your base colour to a specific, within a specific hard line. You go in, add your base colour to an area. The same around here, starting just above the mouth, around the dark black lips, and give it a look. So that should be enough of the purple, and the rest of it, apart from the eyes, is going to be uh, the warm brown. So I'm going to start between the eyes again, brush that warm brown up. Light layers, of course, you may think, oh, that's quite a nice strong brown on the cheetah, so I'll, I'll do a heavy brown, but don't. Do the light layers, lean back, assess the depth of colour, and add more if you want to. So most of our cheetah is going to be, or it's going to certainly have a light dusting of the warm brown first, even the eyebrows. So you can see already we've got, when we've got a dark grey underneath, it makes it gives you a darker brown. When you've got nothing underneath, it gives you a paler brown, as long as it's not too heavy, even around the cheeks. Now you may be thinking, well, some of these bits you're painting over are actually quite light, quite white. And you wouldn't be wrong. But the point is, if you add a little bit of uh, base colour underneath and then put your highlight on the top in a white, for example, that is going to warm the highlight up at the end. So you need to sort of think ahead a little bit. If you just did your white highlight on top of the bare paper, they may well end up looking too garish. So even if you think it's going to be really, really light at the end, just add a little touch of base colour underneath. Just a touch. So we don't have to cover the whole of the paper with colour, but most of it I think. A little bit of colour showing through here and there, at the paper that is. A little bit of paper colour showing through here and there. This is going to hurt. But it's important to remember of course about those highlights that you do at the end. Okay, so finally for this stage, we're going to do uh, a couple of base colours in the eye. So again, we're going to bring a colour from the background into the subject by using the green. So what I'm going to do is put a nice cool green down over the eyes first, including the pupils. So you can use uh, the end of the pastel for that. 
Um, not too heavy to start with. The oil or the whole of the eyeball in both. And then what I'm after is a kind of greenish brown look. So therefore, a coat of green on, which you, you can see obviously is too bright, and I can soften that with a little touch of a, a warm brown over the top as well, nice and light. And give that a rub. So that's our two foundations completed. The tonal sketch, which you can add more detail, more tone if you want to, and then the found next foundation, which is adding your base colour. So you can see it's, uh, when you look at it at this stage, it's quite garish, quite soft, quite muted, almost a little bit rough. So next stage will be to start to add some finer details bit by bit and bring the whole thing out again. Okay, so now we're going to add some uh, finer details bit by bit, uh, the finest details at the end of course. Um, so we'll begin by deciding where we want more details and where we don't need it. So we don't necessarily want uh, more detail around the outside, we want to keep that soft and further back. But things on the same plane, if you like, ears, eyes, nose, mouth, they're the features we want to bring forward. So including the forehead, markings around the eyes and the cheeks and the mouth and so on. So let's start with the, well, let's start with the ear, just add a little bit more shading in the inner ear, over that turn purple, which has helped to cool it down a little bit. I want to keep the ears quite soft. Remember, willow is, um, at this stage anyway, is still a, a cub, nice, soft, fluffy fur. So I want to keep that softness where we can and just bring out the detail a little bit closer. So working from the outside in again, uh, top of the head, I mean the forehead, this whole area can come forward a little bit. So we can make those markings a little bit sharper using a rounded corner of your hard black pastel. If you use a sharp corner, i.e. from you, then you'll find it's a little bit too too sharp to render soft fur. So if you're using a new uh, pastel with sharp corners all the way around and don't forget just to round one of those corners off to begin with gives you a softer mark you can't get a soft mark with a sharp corner so you see already up for those markings which of course is fur a little bit sharper a little bit darker and they start to come forward visually come forward and that's what we want when you get that sense of three-dimensional form. So don't forget of course you still want to follow the direction of the fur, the appropriate length fur and so on. All the way through. Don't panic if you miss a, a spot here and there or add an extra one here, in here or there. I doubt whether anyone will end up counting the spots on your cheetah or your leopard or the stripes on your tiger, whatever it is. Yeah, obviously we want some kind of accuracy when we're painting these things, but don't panic over it. See the centre of the forehead is now coming forward, we're going to get that nice rounded form. And that's principally done with tones. The tones from the tonal sketch from the beginning, and the tones, even when you start to add detail, whether that be with a black pastel or a coloured pastel or a white pastel for your highlights, and they're all adding tone as you work. And of course, don't forget to keep rubbing. Push the pattern into the paper. Gives you a nice firm bed for the next layer. You will never have to spray it with a horrible fixative or hairspray. And you can put it straight. As long as you've rubbed it in well, you can put your finished painting straight into a, uh, 
a normal mount, a normal frame. There's no real need to have a special inner mount to catch dust. As long as you rub it in really well. Remember the outer edge, fluffy from the halo of fur, is going to be nice and soft. And make it a little bit darker, but keep it soft using a flat upper pastel. Try to get that soft fur texture. Still sticking to the rules of length and direction, of course. You can still see the fur texture, even though it's much, much softer, almost out of focus. And I did mention earlier about the rubbing. The rubbing will also spread a little bit of the uh, excess pastel pigment, not a lot, but a little bit of it, into the surrounding areas. And all the way through, if you keep rubbing the pastel bit by bit, layer by layer, and also increase the softness, increase the tonal values here and there, it all helps. One thing you're not going to do, rid of a law, is to rub it out. If you're used to using other papers, or the pastel papers, then you might be a bit nervous about using the law for the first time, thinking, I dare not rub it. And you will end up sort of gently stroking it like that. But don't be afraid of it. You can rub it as hard as you like, and you're not going to smudge anything. All you're going to do is make the pastel stick more into the surface, and make it softer, visually softer. So don't be afraid. A wallpaper can take a lot of punishment. It may seem soft, but it's very, very durable. It's probably absolutely my most, uh, favorite medium for pastels because of the, the soft, not only the softness, but the ability to build up so many layers. You can do 100 layers of pastel on this easily. As long as you use the right pastels and the right technique. I should mention, of course, that the pastels that I use on wall paper are always the harder pastels. Even when it comes to the soft pastels, the coloured ones, they're the harder end of the soft pastel, soft pastel uh, spectrum, if you like. And a, a good way of um, checking that, because they're not graded, is how much they cost. Generally, if they're more expensive, then they have more pigment and less binder. Makes them very, very soft. And it's like trying to paint with talcum powder on your bathroom rug. If you lift it and shake it, all that will come off. And it has a similar effect on the law. The pastels are too soft, very difficult to get them fixed in the fibres of the paper. Whereas on the other hand, if the pastels are a little bit cheaper, then they have more binder and less pigment compared to the expensive pastel. So the binder makes them harder, the extra bit of binder, and it's like uh, painting with dirt on your bathroom carpet. You know if you trod dirt into your carpet it's, uh, and you try to rub it, most of it just sticks in the pile of the carpet. Very difficult to get out. What we want. So keep leaning back and squinting and then checking the tones. So increase the shadow on the tip of the nose. I still want some of that purple to show through here and there, so I'm not going to obliterate it. Still building those uh, shadows up even now with lighter layers. Lean back and squint and decide whether you want some more. A little bit of shadow on the indentation part of the nose, just there, the, that little bow shape where the bow goes in. Down to the mouth, just sketching those whisker follicles again, not too heavily, but almost hidden here. On the other hand, tigers of course, you can see tigers, whisker follicles quite easily because they're surrounded with black fur. And down to the mouth, we start to do a little jagged edge around the mouth to indicate 
a fur, a furry edge of it, like that, rather than just doing a straight line, and then the inner part of the mouth, try and get the shape of the teeth in there, down to the, the gum, so this is the inner part of the mouth down to the lower gum where the teeth are sat. Okay, and then around the edge of the teeth, down to the lower lip. Okay, I'm trying to leave a little bit of the purple showing through here and there. Just help helps to make those lips look cool. Gives them a little bit of substance. I'm finding things are just too flat and black, then they look flat. I mean, the black pastel, a hint of colour underneath, whether it be a cool colour or, or a warm colour, it uh, gives you more depth. Let's soften the edge around the jaw and the chin a little bit. And the corners of the eyes. So what we'll do next, once I finish this step, we'll deal with the eyes, get those out of the way before we do our final highlights. And included in the final highlights will be sort of touching up any dark bits that we want to bring forward again. That's the final stage. So let's have a look at the eyes. So we've got our base colour, we've got the pupils uh, in position where we want them. Before I do anything with the, the outer rim, is what I want to do is finish the coloured part of the eyes first. So, let's just pop the pupils back in place. Make them a little bit darker. Always dab your pupils. Don't try to draw them as a hard circle. Because they do have a kind of soft edge where the muscles of the iris contract. They're only a, a, a sharp circle at the very, very smallest, and they can't close up anymore. So dab rather than draw. Okay, so what do we want in the eyes? We've got our base colour, we've got the green-brown. Uh, we want three things. We want shadows, highlights, and reflections. Now remember, highlights and reflections are not the same thing. First of all, decide where the light's coming from. On our photograph, and we'll use the same lighting here, our light is probably coming from that sort of angle I guess, just to the left of midday, say at half ten, eleven o'clock, which would be about the time when uh, you know, we visit Willow's enclosure on the workshops. So probably half ten, eleven o'clock. So light's coming down from there, which means underneath your eyelids it's going to cast a shadow. And that, well that is going to make that brownie green a little bit darker. So in order to make it darker, softly, what we want to do is glaze. So using a flatter part of the pastel, you see I've got that angled part there, very softly, layer by layer, I'm going to add a glazed shadow underneath the eyelid. Give that a run. And you see I just makes it a darker version of the colour we've already got. And if you want to make it a little bit darker still, add another glaze. So barely touching the paper with the flat of your pastel. That's what a glaze is. Subtly making it darker. A little bit more under there. We can still see the pupils. So always going to get that shadow, even in human eyes, you always get a little shadow underneath your eyelid at the top, assuming the light's coming from that direction. Second thing, and here we'll use the white hard pastel for the first time. Uh, well used white hard pastel so it's got rounded corners and it's a rounded corner that I, that I want for this. Follow the light down, we've got our shadow, as the light comes down it goes through the rounded clear part of the eye and lights up the iris, the colour part of the eye on the opposite side. So lower part of the iris, a little cooler light there. Again it's a glaze, so very very softly with your white, we want a pale version of the colour we've already got the highlight on the iris. Okay. And the third thing of course is the reflection. So if the light's coming from slightly left then we'll have our main reflection slightly left of the pupil just on the line of the shadow. Remember you won't get a reflection in the shadow. 
just underneath it. And use again a slightly rounded corner, not too sharp, and dab it on. Press on a little bit, lean back and squint until you've got that as bright as you want it. And we'll have it a little bit of sky on that side there as a reflection. The reason I'm not going to do a hard spot there is because a lot of this anatomy will get in the way of that sun, that sun spot, if you like. So I have a little bit of the sky reflected there, and most of the bright sunspot reflection will go on that eye instead. And to finish the eyes, and we go back with our black, if necessary, you can touch up the pupil if it's a little bit faint. And the reason we do this at the end is because obviously the black would get smudged in doing all the other bits or subdued rather than smudged. So now we can use a sharper corner of our black pastel to tidy up the eyes. Let's find something more suitable, that's it. So a sharper corner, tidy up the rims, eyelids, and that will give us some nice, sharp, shiny eyes. So remember that sequence. Colored part, shadows, highlights, reflections, and then tidy up afterwards. Okay, see how nice and sharp and clear that eye is now compared to the one on the right. We do the same there, eyelids. So marking out a little bit of texture of the eyelashes on there, which we'll add on in a bit. A little bit more to the pupil, just a touch, and lower ends, that rounded, almost marble eye is now taking shape, a little bit of the purple showing on the lower end, down into the tear duct. back of twint and there we have our eyes. Okay so that brings us on to uh, highlights now. So remember the highlights and reflection we've got in the eyes. There's kind of two stages. We've got the soft highlight on the iris and then we have the sharp shiny reflection on top of that. What we're going to do first is use this uh, softer highlight. I call it secondary highlight. This is where we highlight fur and other soft bits that are not going to be too strong. A primary highlight comes right at the very end and we want to keep it nice and fresh. So always use a rounded part of your white pastel or ivory pastel, whatever you're using, to keep it nice and soft. Don't use a sharp corner. So let's begin with the ears. And we've got the light catching the top of the ear on there. But you can see by not pressing on too hard and using a rounded part of your pastel, white pastel we've got colour underneath we added some colour with that uh, warm brown remember and that just softens and warms up that white a little bit more okay so it's not too strong always of course use light layers so if you need to you can go back and a little bit more maybe to the top of the ear make it a little bit brighter still keep it soft don't press on too hard at this point so it's very difficult to get it off. So we'll put in some hairs. Hairs in the ears grow from the outside in. So I use the, again I'm using a, a rounded corner for this. I don't want those ears to be too in focus. But keep them pushed back a little bit. And then just rub away the starting point, the base of the hairs if you like. Let's uh, do the highlight, soft highlight on the right ear, or willow's left, no left. Uh, so I use a nice flat part from a wider surface. Put the shape of the ear first. A few hairs, then we've got some hairs coming from the back of the ear. Again, I'm using a rounded corner for this, I don't want those to be too sharp. Give a little rub, lean back, squint, decide whether you want it. A little bit 
brighter, maybe towards the top a little bit brighter, where the light is catching. So that's the ear. Now we'll work on the fur. <coughs> so we go from the top of the head around the outside of and in towards the face as I had before. So now we've got some paler fur on the forehead. So this uh, position I'm holding now is now pushing the pastel. Whereas the natural instinct, of course, is to pull the pastel and pull it down like that. Uh, but where we want to see some hairs sticking up on the top of the forehead, it's like painting brass, I suppose. Very few people are sure we paint grass from the tips to the roots. Um, the hair is pretty much the same, the fur pretty much the same. We want to paint from the roots to the tips. That way we can get nice sharp tips of fur around the edge. It also means that we can go in and rub away those roots, bury the roots. So bit by bit all those roots will disappear and we'll have nice sharp ends. It can be quite a a difficult um, method, I suppose, to use of pushing the pastel upwards. I mean, your arm ache after a while, so take little breaks. It seems to go against the natural way of doing things. Remember, bit by bit, these are secondary highlights. These are going to be our warm fur highlights, not the final impact highlights. <coughs> so. Work all the way around the edge, find a nice flat part of your white pastel and softly create that uh, blurred furry edge. And that will almost disappear into the background, not quite but almost. Just to, uh, showing a hint of soft fur. Wider strokes. Wider softer strokes will make it a little bit more blurred. Around the right hand side. Occasionally using the rounded corner of the pastel while you're working to get a few individual hairs. Most of it is going to be sort of fairly blocked. down towards the shoulder which is down here somewhere. If you want to indicate the shoulder off into the right hand corner you can then. We've got a little bit of rub at the base. <coughs> now working our way in we're going to get these secondary highlights a little bit sharper bit by bit. But we don't want to press on too hard. We can use a rounded corner to start creating more individual hairs or small clumps of hairs with a rounded corner but still not pressing on too much. I only want to press on when we want something really really sharp, bright, like the reflection in the eyes. Now you can of course if you like to do lots and lots of detail if you're adding loads and loads of fur layers as you're saying you can. Start off with something that's fairly soft like that and gradually increase the amount of detail and if you want to you can use the, the black, the brown, the white, you can do 100 layers if you have the time and the patience to do it. Uh, of course I'm sure that uh, nobody wants to watch a 10 hour video of me painting layer, layer after layer of fur. However, you can do it. Simply repeat the dark, medium and light, build it up bit, bit by bit, lots of rubbing and you get uh, a lot more detailed, a lot deeper, richer fur at the end. Does it make it a better painting? I don't know. Maybe it, may, it might make it a more photorealistic painting, but at the end of the day, is that what makes it a good painting? You have to ask yourself. I can't tell you the answer to that. Sometimes painting with hardly any detail could be a great painting. Sometimes a painting with lots of detail might look a little bit blunt, maybe a little bit too photographic. So you decide, <coughs> that's your choice. 
neither is right and neither is wrong. Let me just say that. So, palest were in and amongst the dark markings, still allowing a lot of the brown to show through the brown pastel, a bit of the brown paper. The eyebrows are paler, but they're not quite white. So you see how we're putting that warm brown underneath and softened the white on the top. When we come to do the final highlights, we'll add a few eyelashes and the whiskers and all that sort of stuff, length. That's the time to do whiskers and fine details at the end, where you're not going to potentially mute it anymore with the side of your hand. I won't say smudge it because you can't smudge it, but <coughs> maybe muting it. So down to the pale fur below the eyes, and that's to help, again, it's going to help to push the eyes forward. So we can do a little bit of further texture on there as well if you want to. It's fading out into the side of the face. So if you have to lean back and squint, so I always do that regularly all the way throughout. Even towards the end, you need to keep an eye on those tonal values. So again, nice soft textured fur. Rounded corners, great for this. A well-rounded corner, by the way. It gives you that nice soft fur texture. So if it's soft fur, you know, when you're painting a cub or a kitten or a puppy or something like that, and you want that soft dare I say chocolate box feel, nothing wrong with that. And velour is great for that, it gives you that softness. But also, not making the fur, not painting the fur too hard. That really helps as well. Hard fur, hard lines on fur can make it look not so soft. Again, we'll do some fine chin whiskers a few right at the end. What we want to do now is get the shape of the chin and the rounded part of the pastel. Just keep leaning back and squinting, make sure it's got enough tone for you before you move on. So we'll work around the nose, inside of the eyes, just against the nose. There's always a lighter bit of fur there as well of that shadow. It's very, very gentle. It all goes to help pushing those shapes forward. And then just above the tip of the nose, the fur is going to go down. So downward strokes, very short strokes down towards the tip of the nose. And you see a little ridge of fur just hanging over that, that purple highlight. Again, put as much of that or as little of that information in as you want. The important thing is to get the highlight on the bridge of the nose nice and soft so it protrudes forward. And then around the cheeks, so remember we've got not only pale fur around the cheeks, but we've got the light effect from above, so it's going to be paler at the top, darker underneath. So we've got a little bit of paler fur just around tip of the nose there and then the fur is going to go that way to the left on this side but down to the right on that side so rather than just blindly block it all in keep some of the information you've already got that color and those tones from the first two foundation layers let some of that show through just enhance it so a little bit of soft white texture over the top on this side, the only corner, in between those whisper follicles, you just get a little hint of that short fur growing downwards. And <coughs> lean back and give it a squint, so a little bit lighter there. Squint from between your painting on your reference by the way. 
see them both just as thermal values, not as detail. There we go. And then we'll add these teeth in. The teeth are in shadow a little bit. But again, we don't want to make them too too wide, too strong. Just give a little hint of the teeth showing there. Maybe a little hint of a highlight, a shiny highlight on the lower lip. And I think we're about ready for our final highlight. <coughs> so, the final part, not just about the primary highlight, but also about adjusting the dark tone here and there as well. The eyes are very much in focus at the moment, and they're probably, when I squint, they're probably the first thing I see. Now that gives us a clue. The eyes are obviously the most important part to many people. Uh, but also, for me, it's what's around the eyes to bring that forward a little bit more. We've lost some of the so the clarity and the marking is just above the eyes and in the forehead. So now is the time to bring a little bit of that back. This is uh, all about adding contrast, the darkest and lightest colours in your palette. And to bring things into focus that you want to bring into focus, things that are important to you. So the stronger the tone, light and dark, the sharper the detail, light and dark, the more it will come forward. It will be the, the first things people will see when they look at it. The rest will fade into the background. It's an ideal way of drawing attention to the part of the painting you want people to see, most of all. So now the forehead looks a little bit more in focus. Just touch up a little bit of the fur around the corners of the eyes, maybe just below the eyes as well. Teardrop markings, very, very important on the teacher, of course. Just touch them up a little bit. Try and reverse highlighting when you're black. That brings the whole muzzle out. Now you can see by doing that that the tip of the nose is faded back, which is not quite as sharp or as strong as those markings. So, the nose. Eyes, nose, mouth. That kind of general area when you're doing a portrait is why I suggest for adding your strongest tones at the end your darks and of course your primary highlights which are just about to be upon us the dark centre of the mouth around the teeth the dark lip below I think now we're ready for our final primary highlight <coughs> So again, apart from any kind of strong lighting you've got on there, the important areas are going to be those usual features. Ears, eyes, nose, mouth. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit more of a highlight at the top of the ears. As we imagine we've got a fairly strong light coming down from the top. So I'm pressing on a little bit more. I'm still using a rounded part of the pastel. Just pressing on a little bit more to give it that extra strength. And same on the pale fur around the top of the head. Trying to make it a little bit softer at the same time. Bulk it up a little bit. Just press on a tiny bit more. So the light coming from the top is now catching the fur at the top of the head. Just bring it forward. A little bit of rub where you've got the roots. Maybe a touch just around the outside. So flat on the pastel, but a little bit more pressure. Just bring the feet edge off a little bit more. So it's still out of focus, but it's a little bit lighter. And the same around here, maybe a one or two more hairs sprouting off the ear. Don't forget to rub away the roots. And if you're unsure about how how much pressure to use on your primary highlights, you know, try a little bit of pressure, rub it in, just give it a squint, check it first before you add any more. That should do for around the edge. So eyes, nose, and mouth next. And we'll pop on a little bit more. I'm going to use a slightly sharper corner just to get some individual hairs in around the eyebrows. 
and the hot air eyelashes hanging over the eyes there not going over the whole thing again completely just again highlighting existing highlights a little bit stronger just building up those layers Hopefully the eyebrows themselves will be protruding a little bit more. Yep. And any lights that are below the eyes, around the eyes generally, above and below is ideal place to concentrate. That helps to frame the eyes themselves and bring them forward even more. the nose, but we've got a little bit of shine on the tip of the nose there, a little extra there. Uh, Cheetahs do have very dark black shiny noses, a bit like dogs, so we can add that shine to it. And just a little bit of extra around the top of the cheeks, either side of the nose. And of course, finally, we have the whiskers. <coughs> so whiskers. Sharper corner is ideal. Whiskers are always shorter and finer at the front, longer and thicker towards the back. So we'll actually have got a mostly white whiskers, the occasional black whiskers, so we'll put those in. The shorter, finer ones at the front are easy. Just take your sharper corner, click like that. Longer, thicker ones, be decisive. Press on a little bit more. So her whiskers on the photograph are quite droopy. I'm just going to make them a little bit more relaxed. Bring them out a little bit more, like so. Now, as with other fur, what we want to do is we don't want to see the start of the mark, the roots of the whiskers. We want to bury those, and if necessary, we can take the black, where they meet the whisker follicles, just put a little hint of black at the base and of course even add one or two black whiskers in as well. The sharp corner of the black pastel. Don't forget bury the roots. And put some chin whiskers in the sharp corner again. Same thing, exactly the same procedure. Mark the chin whiskers in. And go back and soften the roots with your finger, bury the roots. So I think uh, we'll call that one finished for this uh, particular tutorial. So I'll sign it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And don't forget, coming up on the screen, details of where you can order the home workshop kit for this and many others. And if you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel, details coming up. And you can see loads more like this, still to come as well, of course. And if you feel like it, you can have a look at my Patreon page as well to see what's on offer there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.